minutes away. We are just, we have closed out the prop load on the booster and on the ship. Continuing to get good call outs, our trajectory looking nominal, systems looking nominal, just amazing to see all 33 lit up once again. At this point we've already passed through max Q, that maximum dynamic pressure and passing supersonic, so we're now moving faster than the speed of sound. Getting those onboard views from the ship cameras. Now the, me the next major milestone is gonna be a hot staging maneuver. Again, we're gonna be doing that in just about 90 seconds. To do that, we're gonna shut down all but the three center Raptor engines on Super Heavy. That'll be our three lights go out in the middle. And then we'll see the engines ignite on ship, pushing it away. And that will start carrying the ship into space. Booster will start to do its flip and then move into the boost back burn, setting it up for eventual splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. Hot staging confirmed. Booster's now making its way back, seeing six engines ignited on ship. Kate, we got a Starship on its way to space and a booster on the way back to the Gulf. Everything is looking good for both the first stage on the left-hand side of your screen or the super heavy booster, as well as on the right-hand side of your screen, that is Starship, or we also refer to that as the ship. Now the boost back burn uh, was the first of two burns required to return it to Earth. The next one will be the landing burn, where all 13 center engines will initially ignite and then transition into a three engine burn uh, to help slow it down. Now, just as a reminder of the stage one test objectives, uh, we're looking for controlled ascent, which we have so far, uh, stage separation, which gorgeous, we cruised right through it. Uh, as well as on a nominal trajectory. Good news there telling us that the path that Starship is on uh, is good. Now Starship's second stage is still firing its engines and as you heard, following planned flight path, uh, the ship objectives, we're looking for hot staging, again, cruised right through that. We're looking to demonstrate controlled ascent as well as orbital insertion. Now the bottom right hand corner of the screen shows the ship uh, engine graphics, so be sure to keep an eye on those. Yep, yeah, Kate, like this is just a, a phenomenal test so far. Super Heavy is performing beautifully today. It's on its return leg of the journey. Ship continuing to burn its six engines, those larger circles, the Raptor vacuum engines. The... So for landing burn, we're gonna expect to see the 13 center engines light rapidly bring down the booster's velocity, and then just the three in the center for splashdown. Let's see if that'll work. We're getting a few, a few engines. And acquisition of signal. Let's see if we can get some other video of that. Now, uh, this is a test objective today. It is still something that we're attempting to learn. 
Um, and to make it that far to demonstrate the controlled re-entry up to that point is pretty darn good. Ship continuing to look nominal with its ascent burn. Uh, where vehicle operators are standing by. Now, the next milestone coming up uh, is in less than a minute. Uh, at that point, ship will... Or, I'm sorry, it actually, it already has. Um, ship engine cut off. There we go. <laughs> Raptor engines have successfully shut down. We heard a call out for nominal orbital insertion, which is incredible. Look at these views, Dan. No uh, views or no views. We'll see you back here at T plus 40 minutes. Pez door is opening. And there we just heard call it that Pez door is opening. So that's great. First test. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One of our test objectives today is to open and close that Pez door. That's where we will deploy Starlink satellites from in the future. So great news there that that test objective, excuse me, that test objective is already underway. So come back here, uh, stick around till T plus. Leaves a, a trail behind it. Um, there's some of those great views from uh, from Starlink giving us uh, views of Starship's onboard videos. And so we're hoping that the Starlink on board will let us, just like we're seeing these videos now, see through that plasma field by maintaining a continuous communication lock with the satellites on orbit through the wake that Starship leaves behind. Now, this is only the second time that we're testing Starlink during re-entry. So even though we do have these great visuals now, uh, don't be surprised if we manage to get some signal hiccups through. We're still learning about what that wake will actually look like in practice and whether we're able to get that live continuous high speed data during whereas this onboard view that we have is on the end of a flap. Starship has front flaps and, and rear flaps in the vehicle. Um, so we've got four of those. And oh man, we can see the heating on those flaps as we're starting to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. This is where the Earth's atmosphere is doing the work to slow us down. Uh, now, like we said, this plasma field wow. is, wow, what a view. We hope to maintain these views throughout. Starship is so big that we're hoping that the plasma field doesn't entirely blanket the entire vehicle. Right now, it is not. The Starlinks are still- Views brought to you by Starlink. <laughs> yeah, the Starlinks are still communicating and still uh, capturing the data and the video that we see here. I mean, Shiva, this is just absolutely incredible views. We've never seen anything like this before. This is the, the biggest flying object ever in space. <laughs> absolutely, Kate. And, and it's important to note with the ascent burn that we did was to get us to orbital velocities. Even though we were on a nearly orbital trajectory, so the heating and the loads that Starship is going through right now are what it would be getting if it were recovering from an orbital mission. And, and just the fact that we have views through entry, this is incredible. Yeah, again, this is the furthest and fastest that Starship has ever flown. And you can definitely tell by the, uh, the crowd here in Hawthorne. The heat shield tiles doing their work. We talked about it earlier. Uh, up to 2,600 degrees Fahrenheit that those heat chill tiles are dissipating as we are re-entering. Yeah, now this was one of the critical, or, or rather the key uh, mission objectives that we were hoping to hit today. Uh, we have never, like I said before, this is the fastest and furthest that Starship has ever flown. So this is the first time that we're getting to collect this re-entry data and understand how these 18,000 hexagonal heat shield tiles are working together to protect the belly of Starship as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, once again, the, the atmosphere is doing us a big favor oh, here by... The atmosphere is actually doing us a huge favor here by acting as a braking system for Starship um, as it re-enters the atmosphere. And that's part of the reason why the flaps are so important. We're using the body of Starship and the drag from the atmosphere to slow us down from orbital speed but you want the vehicle to remain stable. You want those heat shield tiles pointed. And so right now we're still waiting to see if we're gonna get data back from this ship. We might be in a bit of a blackout period right now. So still waiting to hear the status on it, but yeah, it was 
We got to the actual entry portion of today. We started into peak heating, which was just a really big milestone. Uh, Starship is pretty unique in the way that it re-enters, especially for something reusable. The closest parallel has been the space shuttle. Um, when we're comparing Starship to like when we bring a Falcon 9 booster back, we're talking about 20 times the energy given the velocity that we're moving at and all of that energy just gets converted into heat and then we need to use those tiles to just help dissipate that heat they're not ablative like you would see on something like dragon which uses an ablative in the capsule shape um, so they are these tiles that are made to be reusable this is an animation of pretty much what we were just watching on actual starship video which is pretty incredible um, but we go through peak heating uh, one of the benefits of today's trajectory, actually, we got closer to what the heating profile will be on just a normal mission uh, when you compare it to our previous flights, which were headed out to Hawaii. Um, so we go through peak heating and then we hit subsonic and then uh, Starship splashes down in the ocean. Again, we're not doing a landing burn on this flight. Uh, and we're not expecting Starship to survive the impact. We're not going to be recovering any of the hardware. Uh, for now, though, we are just still waiting to see if we're going to get some signal back. We're currently at a loss of signal with Starship. Uh, don't know for sure what its status is, and so we're just continuing to listen in. But it was pretty incredible seeing the flaps really do their thing to maneuver the vehicle as it's moving through hypersonic. Uh, one of the big trade-offs between something like shuttle